So this is the first video for chapter six, which is all about probability. We're shifting gears a little bit from chapter five. And we're going to begin in kind of an unusual way. We're going to talk about, in section 6.1, using something called simulation to solve probability problems. And the idea here is that there are certain probability problems that are pretty complicated. And we will get to some formulas and more complicated equations and techniques later on. But there are some probability problems that are just kind of tricky. And we're actually going to use some technology. And by that, I mean either our calculator or actually a table of random digits or in theory, a computer in the real world, to simulate a certain problem. So basically the idea is rather than actually do some math, we're just going to set up a simulation and do a large number of trials, see how often something happens, and let that those number of trials tell us the probability. So here's a good example of a simulation problem. I'll let you read this. Matt plays baseball. His batting average is uh, 327, which means, means he gets a hit 32.7% of the time. Turns out every game he gets four at bats, and we want to find the probability that he is hitless in a game. Okay, so that's an example of a problem that actually would be relatively difficult to do using conventional equations, but so we'll just use simulation. So these four steps are the steps for every simulation problem. I'm just going to run through them quickly, and then I'm going to go through them, each of them in more detail for this example. The first one is you state any assumptions in the problem. Um, then we're going to set up some assigning of digits. That's going to feel very much like when we ass assign numbers for the uh, for conducting a simple random sample. Then we're going to simulate it using many, many repetitions. I'm going to do this using the table of random digits. In reality, you might do it easier on a calculator or using a computer, and then kind of state a conclusion at the end. So in step one, stating your assumptions, I just wrote down, I'll assume that he gets a hit 32.7% of all at bats. And it's a little bit, you think about that's kind of what we mean by batting average. But there's something really important here in the second part of the assumption, which is that I will assume that all at bats are independent. Independence can be a really important vocabulary word in this chapter, so let's make sure we define it. And this is, by the way, almost always something you'll write down in an assumption. Almost always your assumption has to do with independence. Independent is the idea that one outcome, or one trial, I guess I should say, one outcome or trial does not influence another. That is, in the, in the case of this particular example, whether or not he gets a base hit on the first at bat of a game has absolutely nothing to do with the second at bat or the third at bat or the fourth at bat. In other words, every single at bat is independent. If you think about baseball, this is kind of also a bad, a bad assumption. You know, he might be having a bad day, might be a tough pitcher, et cetera, et cetera. But really, in order to do these problems, we have to assume independence. Um, and the definition of independence is always one trial or one outcome does not influence another. In other words, if you knew the pro if you knew whether he got a hit in the first at bat, what's the probability he got a hit in the second at bat? Well, the first at bat didn't matter. It's thirty two point seven percent. And we'll talk a lot about independence in this chapter. So then here's step two, which is assigning the digits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign three-digit numbers. Now, why three-digit numbers? Well, because the number was 32.7%. And that's there's no way to do that in under three digits. So I'm going to say, okay, well, numbers 000, 000 through 326 represent a hit. And then the numbers 327 through 999 represent not a hit. Now, it's a little bit goofy. You'll notice here I started at 000 rather than at 001. And you may think, well, why is that? Let me just kind of doodle down below here. If I did it like this, 001 to 327 was a hit, then I'd have to go 328 to 1000 is not a hit. And the problem is, oh no, now I'm in four digit numbers. So usually, we try to limit, if you try to limit yourself to just three digit numbers or like, two, you know, the, the fewest number of digits you can, this trick of starting at 000 is kind of a good idea. And let's look at what I wrote. I'll pick four three-digit numbers. The three-digit numbers comes from what's going on up here. The four comes from the fact that I wrote before. Remember, he gets four at-bats in every game from the table of random digits. Again, you could also use a calculator, and that will simulate one game. Okay, so let's let's do that on the next page. So here's our table of random digits, and I put some little marks here to kind of help make it a little easier for us. But let's look what we have going on here. So the first time, the first three-digit number I see is 050. Now remember, any number less than 326 is a hit. So this game, did he get a hit? Yes, he did. 
and actually I don't even have to look at the next uh, the next one was 071 he got a hit 663 he did not get a hit and then 281 he did get a hit but certainly that game he actually got a hit now let's go to the next game 194 hey that's a hit 148 that's a hit 837 sorry 873 that's not that's not a hit and 041 that is a hit but certainly that game did he get a hit yes he did okay now the next game 785 uh, no a hit not a hit 576 not a hit 451 not a hit 959 that's not a hit oh no he went hitless in that game so he did not get a hit and I'll just do one more for you here. Uh, 656, not a hit. 568, not a hit. 732, not a hit. 552, not a hit. Oh no, he did not get a hit that game. And I'm actually going to pause it right now and just do the numbers because it doesn't. It's not worth your time doing having this. But let's 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 actually do 10 games and just see how many of those games he got a hit or not. So I did it 10 times. And this is what I got. I got in six games he got a hit and four games he did not get a hit. So now what would your conclusion be? Your conclusion would be that the probability of him getting a hit in a game is about equal to, that's an important thing to write because we're not sure it's exactly that, but how many games did we do? Well, we did uh, 10 total games and he got a hit in six of them. So in other words, you might also write the probability of going hitless, which is I think actually the question I asked at the beginning is about equal to 4 out of 10, which is about 0.4, okay? Um, does this notation make a little bit sense? The big capital P stands for probability, and this is the particular event we cared about, okay? And this is a really important symbol, uh, the approximately equal to symbol, because we're not sure it's exactly 40%. It's only for our 10 trials. In order to be really more accurate, what might you do? try a lot more trials than 10, right? And this is where a calculator or a computer could really help you. Okay, let's do another example. Uh, it's the last example of section 6.1, so I'll just read it to you quickly. So Susan's commute requires riding the bus and taking the subway. The bus is late 15% of the time, oh no. And the subway is late 25% of the time, oh no. She's late if either the bus is late or the subway is late. And again, this notation, find the probability that Susan is late. Okay, so either if the bus is late or if the subway is late. I'm just going to run through this quickly here. We'll assume independence of the bus and the subway. That is, we'll assume that whether the bus is late has nothing to do with whether the subway is late. In other words, if you knew whether the bus was late, that would not change the probability of the subway being late. Okay, then here I've listed all the outcomes. So we've got 0, 0 through 14 is the bus is late. 15 through 99, that's a yucky 99, the bus is on time. For the subway, 00 through 24 is the subway's late. 25 through 99, the subway's on time. And again, notice my trick of using starting at 00, right, because then I can get all 100 possibilities done from 00 to 99. If I started at 01 here, then this number would be 100, and then I push myself into three digits. Now, why two-digit numbers here instead of three-digit numbers? Well, it just had to do with what the, what the question was talking about. The numbers in the problem were 15% and 25%. I don't need three digits to represent that. So I can get away with just using two digits everywhere. And then I wrote, I'll pick a pair. A pair, why a pair? Because it's the bus and the subway. A pair of two-digit numbers. Now, why two-digit numbers? Because that's what I wrote up here. And the first one represents the bus, second one the subway. So I'm basically going to have to pick four numbers, right? The first two numbers are the bus. The second two numbers are the subway. Okay, and here's my table. Just for fun this time, let's actually start at line 141, just to be a little bit different. Okay, and remember I wrote up here, the first two numbers, 00 through 14, is the bus is late. 00 through 24 is the subway is late. And let's just do some tallying here and see what we see. Well, the first two numbers, and starting at line 141, the first numbers are 96 and 76, both on time. 73 and 59, both on time. 64 and 23, both on time. 82 and 29, both on time. 60 and 12, okay, oh no, the 12, the bus is late, so she's late. 94 and 59, on time. 16 and 51, on time. 
94 and 50 on time, 84 and 25 on time, 33 and 72 on time. Let's go a little bit more. 72 and 82 on time, 95 and 02 late, 32 and 97 on time, 89 and 26 on time, 34 and 08, that's a late, 77, 91 on time, 94, 45 on time, 90, 50, 45, oh no, I lost my place, oh no, uh, what did I just say, uh, oh shoot, 91, shoot, I lost my place, I'm just going to stop there then, oh no, I lost my place, <laughs> okay, so now we'll say, okay, how many did I try, just because I lost my place, well I did, there were three here, Looks like there were uh, 14 here. So of the 17 things I tried, there were three of them being late. So you can figure out that's about the probability she was late. And look at right here, okay, this approximately equal symbol, really, really super important. Okay, that's probability through simulation. And by the way, don't lose your place.